Welcome. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to discharge a patient from the emergency department. From the patient's chart, I can go into the discharge routine either by selecting the discharge button in the top navigation bar, or I can select it from within my documentation on the patient. I'm going to go ahead and go into the documentation that I've started on my patient. From my documentation template, I can enter the discharge routine by selecting it here. This will bring me into the same discharge routine if I were to have selected from the button at the top of the navigation bar. In order to discharge a patient, at minimum, you must select the Ready for Discharge box that is located at the top right-hand corner of the screen. By selecting this box, this will let the nurse know by a notification to her desktop that the patient can be discharged. You can do this, for example, if you're ready for the patient to go home, but you're not ready to finish your documentation on the patient. In this case, I'm ready to discharge the patient and I will finish my documentation at the same time. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the discharge routine. When the discharge routine opens up, I'm gonna go ahead and select that I'm ready for this patient to be discharged. I'm now asked to provide a discharge problem for this patient. The system will give some suggestions for discharge problems based upon the active problem list. When this patient presented, they did present with chest pain, and this was one of the active problems. However, we have diagnosed the patient with a pneumonia. I'm going to go ahead and put that as the discharge problem. When I select discharge problem, I'm provided with a lookup list where I can search for the discharge problem. I'm going to enter pneumonia and select it from the list. I do not have any ambulatory orders for this patient. This section would be used if I was going to refer the patient to an outpatient clinic or an outpatient office. I will go into the instruction box and I'm going to enter that I provided the prescription for Leviquin 750 milligrams daily for five days and that I recommended the patient follow up with the family physician within a week. If I wanted to provide the prescription by using the system to print an electronic prescription, I could do so by going into the prescription routine here. Referrals allows me to enter who I'm going to ask the patient to follow up with. This is a communication box only and will print with a discharge packet. It does not actually book the patient for any referrals when you use this section. I'm now going to hit save and I've now completed the discharge for this patient. In this next example, we're going to discharge the patient, but we're going to use the system to create the prescription for the patient, as well as we're going to book the patient for follow-up with one of the outpatient clinics. So I've selected the patient here that I'm going to go ahead and discharge from the department. For this patient, I'm going to go directly into the discharge routine as I've already completed my documentation on the patient. I'm going to go ahead, highlight the patient, and click Discharge. This will bring me into the discharge routine. I'm going to go ahead and select Ready for Discharge by selecting the button that you see here. For the discharge problem, the system is not suggesting any discharge problems because there is none in the active problem list at this time. I'm going to go ahead and select Discharge Problem, and I'm going to search for the discharge problem, and in this case, it's an ankle fracture. The system will bring up a list of diagnoses that I can choose from. Here you see ankle fracture. If I want to be specific and put the left ankle fracture or the right ankle fracture, I can do so here. It does map to the same ICD-10 code for billing purposes. I will just select the left ankle fracture. And the discharge problem is now populated in this field. 
For this patient, I am now going to book the patient for follow-up in the orthopedics clinic for their ankle fracture. To do this, I can place the order through the other ambulatory orders button. When I click on this, it's going to bring up a search box where I can search for outpatient referrals and consults. In this case, I want to do an outpatient referral to an office or a clinic. At this time, the system says test as we are still finalizing the build of this. However, in the live system, it will be referred to as just outpatient clinic and office referral. When I select this order, it then presents me with a template that I can fill out for follow-up in the orthopedics clinic. The health card number will pre-populate. At this point in time, it does not, as the system does not have a health card number for this test patient. It will also include the patient's phone number, their family physician. It's asking for the name of the physician that you're consulting. If you know the name of the physician, or this is a consult to an office-based practice and not a clinic, you can go ahead and enter the name of the physician here. If it is just a clinic appointment and you're not sure who the physician MRP will be for this consult, you can go ahead and just select clinic in this box here. In this case, I can have the patient follow up with Dr. Elder. I have not spoken with Dr. Elder because this is a deferred follow up that can wait for a week or so before it's seen in the orthopedics clinic. I'm going to select the clinic that I'm going to ask this patient to be referred to. And as we mentioned, this is going to be the orthopedics clinic. The urgency can be up to about two weeks, I think would be safe. And the reason would be a minor fracture of the fibula. Okay, and then I can go ahead and submit that order for outpatient follow-up. And now brings me back to the discharge routine where it now shows me that this patient does have an order for follow-up in the outpatient clinic being the orthopedics clinic. When the patient's discharged, this information that I entered here will go to one of the clerk's desktops and they will print this information and fax it to the appropriate clinic or to the appropriate office referral. If I want to review the details of the ambulatory order that I just put in for the orthopedics clinic, I can select more detail and this will show me the details that I have placed in on that consult to the orthopedics clinic. I'm going to go ahead and put some instructions in as well that I have given to the patient. I advise the patient some general information on management of their fracture as well as that I put a referral to the orthopedics clinic. I'm now going to go ahead and write a prescription for this patient. I'm going to use this prescription module within the Meditech Expand system to create my prescription so that I can print it. I'm going to click on the prescription button here and it brings me into the prescription ordering routine. I have some favorite medications here that I have favorited that I like to prescribe. However, if I want to find a medication from the catalog, I select the search medications button that you see here. When I select it, I can now type in a first few letters or the string of the medication that I want to look for. And in this case, I want to prescribe some naproxen. When I type in naproxen, it's going to come up with some options available to me. This will have many different types of naproxen dosing, different tablets, capsules, delayed released, and different options that you have available to you. I'm going to go ahead with the naproxen 500 milligram tablet, and I'm going to prescribe the one milligram, 500 milligram tablet twice a day, PRN as required. And this is going to be an order that I'm going to do quite often. So I'm going to hit the favorite button because this is something that I will frequently order. And next time it will show up on my favorite medications list rather than having to go through the module and selecting it this way. And for the number of tablets I'm going to give the patient, I'm going to give them 60 tablets. So I'm going to go ahead and queue and exit. And I got to fill in a remainder field, the reason for the pain medications for pain. I'm going to queue and exit. 
and I'm going to submit that prescription into the discharge routine. And as you can see now, the prescription for the naproxen is now noted here. At this point in time, I'm now done all the discharge information that I want to have in the plan when I discharge the patient. I have the discharge problem. I have other ambulatory orders where the patient will be booked into the orthopedics clinic for follow-up of the ankle fracture. I provide the patient some instructions and I provide a prescription for the patient for naproxen. The referral section down here, as mentioned before, is only for communication purposes. If the name of a referral to a particular physician or to a particular office were named in this box here, it would only be for the purpose of printing it out on the discharge packet. It does not refer the patients to the actual clinics by using this area of the discharge plan. In most cases, you will not use this area when you're discharging a patient. I can go ahead and save this, and by saving this, I have now discharged the patient, and the patient is ready to be discharged home. If I want to print the prescription at this time, I can select the printer icon that you see here. I can print section and select the prescription. I could print the entire packet if I wanted to, which would present to the patient a packet of their summary of their visit to the hospital. But in this case, I just want to print the prescription so that I can sign it and give it to the patient. The printing of the actual discharge packet will most likely be done by the nursing staff. So I selected prescriptions. I'm going to hit print. And you'll see a box pops up over here in the corner. When I select it, you will see that the prescription is now here. My prescription for my naproxen with the patient demographics on top, my name and my CPSO college number, just requiring me to sign it and to date it, and then I can provide it to the patient. And I'm going to save this and go back out to my chart, and I'm now ready to discharge the patient.